Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk, and this time continuing our theme of looking at Biddenden, I've come to Biddenden's vineyards, and I'm joined by the lovely Vicky Eames, who's agreed to take me round, which is fantastic. Hello, Vicky. Hello. So, we're standing here at the Biddenden's Bindens, I've got to get that right because they're very hot on that um, vineyard. So we're going to take a little stroll, but before we take a little stroll, tell me about the vines that we see behind us. Um, so the vines that we've got here are Ortega vines. So on site at Biddenden, we've got 11 different varieties of vine. Wow. Ortega is the one which Biddenden's best known for. Um, it produces a medium fruity white wine um, and accounts for about half of the vineyard here. Right. Oh, right. OK. So we're filming in July, had to think then, in the yes. height of the summer. So how far are you from when you harvest your grapes? So harvest normally takes place the last week in September. Okay. Um, but with the heat that we've been having this year, it's looking like it's possibly going to be a couple of weeks earlier. Oh, right. Um, we're very open to the elements and just yes. have to go with what the weather delivers. So a year like this where it's very dry with a long, prolonged spell of warm weather tends to help bring the harvest forward. And so is, that's good news for wine growers, is it? Hopefully, Hopefully. yes. Hopefully. Okay, <laughs> cool. So anyway, we're going to take a stroll so I'm going to come around on this side and you can tell us a little bit more um, about the uh, about the vineyard so uh, let's let's do a bit of history shall we and, yep. and find out um, when it all started um, so it started back in 1969 right so Biddenden's actually approaching their 50th anniversary next year um, the vineyards completely family owned and run by the Barnes family um, originally, it was an apple orchard. Oh, okay. Um, Julian, who runs the vineyard today, his parents were looking at different things that they could do to diversify. Um, and his mother heard a piece on Women's Hour. Oh, right. About English vineyards and how they were being replanted and they were going to be the next big thing. Um, they tried it with a third of an acre and they've just grown from there. So, so it's quite a, quite a challenge then back then in 69 for yes. English wines because it was almost unheard of. Of, wasn't it? Exactly. No, it was, um, I think there were very challenging times and a lot of people wondered if they were doing the right thing, but they're still here nearly 50 years yes. later. So I think it was a very good choice uh, on their part. Absolutely. So um, you say that your these variety, uh, which I've immediately forgotten the name Ortega. of. Ortega. Ortega, are half of your uh, vineyard. Yes. So tell me what other varieties you grow here. <clears throat> Um, so it's 11 varieties in total. The majority are either Germanic, which Ortega is, um, so also lesser known varieties like Huxelreeb, Schomburger, Reichensteiner, um, and then also French varieties, which more people have heard of, like Pinot Noir. Um, also Bacchus is a very popular English grown variety now as well. Um, just recently more vineyards have been planted of that as well here. Um, but yeah, it's a real mix, German, French, all very well suited to our English climate here. And it's everything that you can buy from the vineyard and the, wherever you supply all comes from here. You're not, yeah. you don't have any other grapes coming from elsewhere. No, so it's completely estate grown, which means all of the grapes are grown here on site. Um, they're all harvested pressed on site and bottled on site as well. Wow, wow. Yeah, so clearly you go out and do events to promote the wines because I know you're at Tractor Fest yeah. this year in August, yes. which is going to be fantastic. And I'm hoping that you'll come along and um, be on the Bald Explorers uh, live Facebook page doing some tastings yeah, and stuff. I'm sure there can be some tastings <laughs> arranged. Uh, just to, to uh, you know, promote the brand and encourage people to come along. What, what, tell me some of the challenges that uh, growing grapes in this country <coughs> it faces you. Um, I, I think it's the same as with any agriculture. You're very much open to the elements. There's an awful lot that you can do in the vineyard with regards to the way in which you grow, how they're pruned, how you treat the vines throughout the year. But at the end of the day, you are open to the elements. So right. you can do everything you like perfectly but if the rain comes at the wrong time or frost comes late in the year you're very open to being affected by that um, everything that happens out here in the vineyard translates through back to the wine yes as well. of course yes um, 
it very much all starts out here and, and Julian and Tom as their winemaking have to do what they can with what they're given which some years will be amazing crops and a lot of grapes and other years might be less quantity wise but better quality it's very I, changeable so th now i don't know how you go about picking the crop how you harvest it is it machine done or by hand no it's all done by hand oh okay um, so the pickers will come out there will be big tubs which are placed in the rows everyone picks into their own bucket by hand which also means <clears throat> they can individually select the best grapes as well right um, of course it's, it's more thorough than picking by machine which you yes. can do um, and then they'll be emptied into the larger tubs taken back down to the winery ready to be pressed on the same day what that reminds me of is of course Kent's famous for its hop pickers hop growing and, and all of that and here we are and, and of course hops is um, was, gr was grown for beers for real ales mm -hmm. and here we are growing <clears throat> English grapes or growing in England different variety of grapes as you said <laughs> and that tradition though of having your pickers coming in uh, seasonal presumably at, the, yes. at that one time of course so that's you know that's really nice from a heritage point of view you've still got a, a similar industry yes yeah um, these, I have to say, you know, strolling down past these wonderful vines is absolutely beautiful. It's lovely to see them all um, in their rows looking very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not military, but you know what I mean. Um, very organised. Or yes, that's right. <laughs> very well said, organised. But of course, it's not just grapes that you deal with here. No. So tell me about the cider. Um, so Biddenden is also very famous for Biddenden cider. Um, which is a traditional still cider made to the family's recipe. Um, they don't actually grow any of the apples here on site, but they work with local farmers to source the best apples. So they're still Kentish apples? Yeah, all Kentish, all within a very local proximity to the vineyard. Um, and they'll be picked when they're orchard ripe, so they'll have a really good, strong flavour. Um, and then they come here, they're pressed, fermented, and then bottled on site as well. Um, and then also on the side, they also make apple juices and pear juices too. Now I know before we started filming that we had a little sneaky drink of some of the uh, apple juices. Yeah. And I have to say, and um, this is not biased because we're walking through your vineyard. <laughs> um, I mean, it was a hot day uh, and very, very, not only refreshing, but also very tasty, you know, beautiful yes. flavours. Yeah, and that is just pure juice. So it comes from the blend of apples that are used. There's no sugar added. There's no flavouring added. It is just a real traditional pure apple juice. Um, also by working directly with the farmers, it means that the fruit is picked when it's ripe and ready and that really translates back through to the flavour and the juice as well. And, and of course anything that's local is going to, uh, because all the processes are done locally, are just making the thing fresher, tastier. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what's the sort of life, uh, the shelf life of um, the ciders? Um, so the ciders, they are lightly pasteurised, which gives them a two year shelf life. Oh, okay. Um, so it's not like your scrumpy, which is made and has to be drunk straight away. Um, it, it does have a shelf life to yes. it. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that's all right. You can buy crates of it and, and keep it yes. and get through it. <laughs> well, we've sort of um, run out of time, really. Um, and I would definitely recommend if you're coming through the area that you certainly don't miss coming to Biddenden vineyard um, because they're very welcoming for one thing you have a, a shop and you do tastings here yeah yeah so it's completely free for anyone to come and visit the vineyards open seven days a week with the exception of Sundays in January and February but throughout all of the rest of the year um, and you can come you can take a walk around the vineyard oh, have right. tasting oh, right. vineyard you can, people shop. can come and walk around the vineyard just like yeah, we did just like we did oh yeah. well, well, well you see you don't expect that that's really cool <laughs> um, and then also um, guided tours are run as well so there are charity tours which are every Saturday through the year and Wednesdays June till September or you could book on for a private tour and have your own 
guide, show you around, run you through the tastings as well. Fantastic. Oh, well, there you go. If that's not a reason to come along, I don't know what is. Thank you, Vicky, so much for taking us around and no explaining problem. about the wonderful world of grape and cider uh, <laughs> and all the lovely English wines. So I'm going to go back now to the shop and uh, do a bit of tasting. What would you recommend? Oh, I think you'd like have this. to go for a bidden insider, there definitely. You go. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, join me again when I go rambling somewhere else on another occasion, but from Vicky and I here in Biddington in Kent. Goodbye. <laughs>